Good evening, everybody. Welcome to our special Board of Education meeting. Today is Monday, October 23rd. As always, before we begin, please take a second to silence your phones and then kindly join me for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, we do not have Mr. Hatfield tonight, uh, so Mr. Roush is going to take roll for us. Yep, President McFarland. Here. Vice President Roush is here. Secretary Hatfield is absent. Treasurer Lauterbach. Here. Blazy. Here. Member Ringgold. Here. Member Horowitz. Here. Okay, I have a quorum of six people. Okay, thank you. Um, jumping right in, we are at. Uh, to address the board, this is item two on our agenda, and because this is a special meeting, um, I would ask that anybody who wishes to address the board, please limit your comments to the superintendent search only. Um, and so with that being said, Ms. Bonadies, the floor is yours. Good evening. On January 19th of 2022, I checked on the MPS school webpage and found out there was a meeting that morning at 8.30. Joe and I attended that meeting, and I'm sure those in attendance remember, because that was the day I was interrupted twice during my three-minute public comment after the previous speaker ran over by at least a minute before being stopped. It was after that event in a FOIA and Open Meeting Act training class that I attended that I put in a FOIA request in May of 2022 for a six-month subscription, which is the limited amount of time for a Freedom of Information Act, to all regular and special meeting agenda packets. Joe and I have been paying about $100 six months for these subscriptions, and one is still currently active. I asked the FOIA coordinator after the last meeting this question. I would like to know why I did not receive the agenda and information about the meeting held on October at 12 p.m. The response was about meeting. It had nothing to do with my requested information. I received no real explanation as to why my FOIA request for information about special meetings was not fulfilled. The thing is this, it was stated by several board members last week that the Open Meeting Act was followed and the public was notified. The notice for the special meeting appears to be put on the website, the top drop-down bar on the left, which was not very visible. It was not added to the board's calendar of meetings on the website, previous special meetings, and today's meeting were added to the page, though. In fact, someone looking at the Board of Education page would not even know that that special public meeting on October 10th took place, as there is no visible reference to it, no agenda, no link to it, and in fact, if you search it, it won't bring anything up for October 10th. I was told by Superintendent Penny that it wasn't that it wasn't because it was a committee meeting and not a special board of education meeting. But this wasn't a regular committee meeting, which is why it was to be, had to be posted for the public. It was a special public meeting, otherwise why the attempt to fulfill the Open Meeting Act. As far as the Open Meeting Act in section 15.266, providing copies of public notice on written request, Section 6 says, upon the written request of an individual and upon the requesting party's payment, a public body shall send to the requesting party a copy of any notice required to be posted pursuant to Section 5, 2, and 5. I have paid the FOIA fees requesting copies of all agenda packets, including special meetings and regular meetings, and to receive these communications by email. Why not this time? Were you really in compliance with the Open Meeting Act? Thank you. The answer to that is yes. Thank you. Is there anyone wish to address the board? Please. Thank you. Hi, I'm Angie Kelleher. Um, at a previous meeting, um, one of my neighbors brought up um, something about the National School Board Association, and I wanted to address that. I think most of you already know this, but in case anyone watching doesn't, um, Back at the height of the pandemic, when there were mask mandates, there were lots of people attending school board meetings across the country that hadn't before, and some of those got pretty heated, um, and some school board members were threatened and harassed and even got death threats. I don't think that happened here in Michigan. 
Michigan. Um, but some, some school board members in other states did, and that's when um, the National School Board Association um, told the president and his administration that some parents' actions pushing back against critical race theory, mask mandates, and other flashpoints were the equivalent to a form of domestic terrorism. So he, they were talking about some parents, um, and some parents did do that. So I don't think it's out of line for the federal government to keep an eye on that issue, and I think that the National School Board Association was advocating for numbers. It never said that parents weren't allowed to voice their concerns, and so I don't think there's any reason to hold any of that against the Michigan Association of School Boards, um, who are one of our potential search firms. Um, also wanted to mention that um, I, I was looking at articles about other school districts that have done searches, and sometimes when there was an internal candidate, some of the citizens were unhappy um, if they had an internal candidate because they said it was a waste of money. And I just wanted to address that since we do have an internal candidate. Um, we have Ms. Miller Nelson, who's a wonderful interim superintendent, and I don't know that she's going to apply, but if she does, I'm glad we're using search firms. I'm glad we're seriously looking at other candidates. Um, that will give us a sense of the type of talent that's in the market so we can compare our internal candidates. It will help us bring a new perspective to the organization. Um, and if our internal candidate is successful, then we will know that, that, that she has more credibility and more respect for having gone through that process. Um, I also am glad we're using search firms because um, it just helps us to sort of get out of our little bubble and maybe see what other candidates are out there. And I would like to caution us against looking for a culture fit um, I think we don't necessarily want someone that exactly fits with our current culture. I know that's very tempting and it would be much smoother. Um, and I'm not saying we shouldn't hire internal candidates, but I think it's important to look for different perspectives as well in innovative ideas. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Okay. We will close the floor and moving on. Uh, we have presentations to the board, item 3.1. Uh, first up, we have Mike Ritchie from Hazard Young Atia and Associates. Mike, thanks for coming out. Well, thank you for having me. Um, just give me one second to get organized here and get my clock out so I don't go over my time. So, um, yeah, we're uh, Hazard Young and Atiyah. We're based out of uh, the Chicago, Illinois area. We are a national search firm. We have consultants all over the U.S. I happen to live in Wisconsin. My partner uh, lives in Michigan, and you'll meet her in a second uh, with, through a video. Um, but just my background real quickly. Uh, I've been in education for 39 years, uh, 25 as a superintendent. I've worked for HYA for the past six years. And in my free time, I enjoy any outdoor activity, and I also ump high school baseball. So at this point, I meet my partner, who is upstate, and when we answer these RFPs, we never know when the board is going to have their presentation. So that's kind of the uh, dilemma here. And I'm not sure, do you have it on your screen? Am I going to be able to play that video at all? Under her name. Other that, that loaded up. Just a little bit about the firm. In existence for 35 years, we've done over 1,600 uh, searches. We're a national firm. We do about 80 searches per year, and we have 130 associates across the U.S., so we cover almost every state. Uh, like I said, I've worked for HYA for the past six years, and then my partner, uh, Serena Williams, has about 20 years of experience. Serena Shivers has about 20 years of <laughs> That was nice. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Um, she's going to really appreciate that. Um, has about 20 years of experience uh, in education across Michigan. There we go.
technology, right? <laughs> I'm just going to keep going. If they get it, then we'll just pause and we'll have her do her introduction. Um, but so why HYA? Uh, a couple of things. So basically, uh, HYA, we work for you. We believe every child has the right to a quality education. And the things that we do, we're going to align your new leader with your district and what you want. We work for the board, and um, we will work tirelessly. We'll, we'll oh, there we go. But probably what you might be most interested in is that I have roots. Hello. And good evening. Hello. And good evening. My name is Dr. Serena Schiffer, and I am a proud member of the HYA search. I am also full-time the Deputy Executive Director for Michigan's Association of Superintendent and Administrators. In addition, I am a former superintendent where I was superintendent of Michigan for five years. But probably what you might be most interested in is that I have roots in Midland. I grew up in Midland from the time that I was born until I was in my elementary years, and my sister and I attended Chestnut Hill Elementary. You see, my father was an executive back in the 1970s and 80s with Dow Chemical Company, which is what brought my family to Midland in the very early years of my upbringing. I have very fond memories of growing up in Midland and have stayed connected to the area as I have um, longtime family friends that are built. I look forward to being on this journey with you, and I look forward to bringing my expertise as not only a superintendent, but also one that trains all the new superintendents here in the state of Michigan. And I also, at the national level, work with those that are aspiring to be superintendents from all across the United States. Hopefully I get a chance to meet you in person if HYA is selected. Again, my name is Dr. Serena Shivers and I wish you all well in your decision. Thank you. Yes, Serena Shivers. Okay, so why HYA? So as you can see from the slide, um, we, we believe every child is entitled to a great education. It starts with your leader. So we'll make sure we go out and, and seek the best fit for your district. We'll work, we work for the board. It's your search. We'll customize your search uh, to meet your needs. We'll save you time. I'll talk a little bit about, about our technical um, infrastructure that we have. And the board portal is really important more portal as they go along. We're a firm that you can trust, and according to market research, HYA completes the most searches and has the lowest superintendent turnover rates of any of our competitors. If you look at the right, you'll see the, the last two years of data of the searches HYA has uh, completed um, compared to some of our competitors. The other thing is we have national partners. A um, we're, we have a great partnership with AASA. In fact, we just did their search last year executive director as well. We partner with Alice, the uh, administrative and superintendent group, and also the National Association of the Board. National Association of School Superintendents, I happen to serve on the executive committee of uh, that as well. So really big national outreach. The engage phase, the recruitment phase, and then that select phase. So in the engage phase, what we really focus on is understanding the desires of your, and even like in your RFP, you talked about to in linked and inter intertwined to the commu surrounding community. So in that engage phase, we really get out and 
get to meet the community and we have um, we start with a board planning meeting and we come up with focus groups we'll interview all the board members individually and then we'll ask the board who else should we interview individually maybe you had a 20 year old or a retired teacher that was here for a long time or or a, a mayor or a city administrator chief of police um, so we'll ask you who we should go out interview individually and then we'll come up with focus groups we'll do a number of focus groups anywhere between 12 and 20 focus groups across the community we'll do community forms and then we have a on survey and we take all that data and we put it together and we create your district leadership report so that's how we build who we're going to help you hire on based on what your community uh, has in mind as far as what the superintendent and we do remind them it's the board search uh, but we like to get that input from the community as far as our focus groups and how they work we want to make sure we involve as many people as possible so the first thing we do is we'll do a combination of in-person meetings and zoom meetings prior to COVID it was all in person COVID hits it was all zoom and what we found great attendance with zoom meetings and so do a blended model so we'll do in person and we'll do um, zoom as well flexible meeting times we'll do a morning noon evening we found for parents if we do a zoom meeting for parents Sunday night seven o'clock great time to do a zoom meeting for parents because they're usually home at that time we want maximum participation diverse um, groups will go out to your community uh, we'll go to where they are. So as, as an example, if there's a language barrier, uh, we'll go and if, if they have a center, we'll go to their center because they're um, in a familiar area versus coming into a school. So we'll really get out and do an outreach to include everyone. And you can kind of see on the left, we give you some ideas of what groups we will do focus groups with. So you've got your certified staff, your support staff, parents, business people, um, business leaders, civic groups, booster clubs, PTOs, arts groups, and anyone else at the board thinks that we should interview. But the one group we do insist on interviewing is high school students. Uh, we really get in, we get into the high schools, and you already have a student advisory team. So I'll give your current superintendent credit for putting that team together because students have a voice and they need to have a voice across the school. So I just want to quickly share two comments. These are actually, so I led a, a couple searches here recently. One, one was in Lincoln, Nebraska, and this is what the student said. The new superintendent needs to have good taste in music. So we know they have good taste in decisions. Students are hopeful that the next continue the legacy of superintendents be willing to listen to students, gain input from students, and be open-minded to change. High school students said that. One other quick quote, you can hire an old superintendent. They might like a just want to see the superintendent with a sense of humor, engaged, and present. Again, high school students. So they really have an idea of what's, you know, what's going on. So that report becomes a great roadmap for your district and for the new superintendent. And that way, you know what the community and, and students, how they feel. So then we'll move on to our recruit phase. And then in that recruit phase, what we, I'm gonna back it up so you can see that. So the recruit phase, we will focus on, should, and one of the things that we do is we recruit superintendents. And so about 75% of the superintendents that we place are recruited by HYA. 90% uh, of our associates across the US are retired superintendents. Um, we have our website, about 5,000 uh, views uh, per week on our website, and also our news goes out to 22,000 subscribers. Uh, we'll do marketing tools, flyers, recruitment uh, packages. We uh, are represented at state and national conventions as well. So that network is really important to us to go out and recruit. As we move into that select phase, we screen every single applicant and we give them a 20 to 40 minute interview um, just to get to know them a little bit better and to feel for them. Um, we also will present you a tiered slate. And so what that means is as we get all these applicants that come in, we're gonna put them in tier one, tier two, and tier three. 
Tier 1 are going to be the strongest of the candidates. They're going to match your profile report. They're going to be uh, something that your district uh, would be very satisfied with if that person became superintendent. Tier 2, not quite as strong as Tier 1. Maybe we found something in their background. Uh, maybe they had a negative situation somewhere, um, so they're not quite that Tier 1. And then Tier 3, all you want to interview Tier 3. You will see every single application as they come across your board portal. And so that's kind of how we um, work. And then um, we give the finalists a day in the district, and so we set that up. A full day in your district, they'll do a lot of meet and greets. They'll again, they'll meet with students, they'll meet with staff, they'll meet with parents, they'll meet with business leaders, and meet and greets. And then those meet the 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 people that are in the audience or the attendance, they're going to have a chance to give some feedback. And so we have a QR code. It, go, it goes to a link where we ask two questions. What strengths would this individual bring to your district? And then what would concern you if this individual were hired? And that, those responses go immediately to the board. So you'll see all those responses as to how those individuals feel about um, those top three candidates. And then we facilitate that third party background check where we, um, a very comprehensive background check on your, on your finalist. So that's kind of our, our select phase. Go through the process. We t I talked a little bit about the board. What's the board portal? The board portal, think of it as your own web page where you're going to have access to all of our information. You will see every application as they come in. They're downloaded uh, one click, and you'll see if, if a resume is 30 pages, if the application process is 30 pages, you will see all 30 pages in one click. So you'll see every applicant. Schedules will be in there. Focus group schedules will be in there. Interview schedules. The tier one, tier two, tier three. So all of our material we put in location. That way you don't have to keep searching for emails. You can just have one link and 24/7 access to that as well. It's very popular with with school boards. So just a little bit about some of our past Michigan experiences. You can see we've done a number of searches um, in Michigan, and uh, actually you'll see Midland there. I believe we did Midland in 1999. If I, w I went back and looked, and um, so. I HYA did that search in 99. Again, that distinct advantage, uh, we talk a lot about those things, you know, with um, Serena being, uh, having about 20 years of experience. The one thing, I worked for HYA for six years. I've done some more research, I think five, but I'm up to close to 30. Every one of the superintendents that I have placed as the current position, it comes back to engagement piece. It comes back to the best fit, the best match, for the district. Our recruiting advantage, um, you know, again, 75% of the people that we place have been recruited and work across the nation is, is very large. And I'm just about wrapped up here. I wanted to show you this slide. So this gives you an idea. I'm not going to go through all six uh, scenarios you have them in front of you. This just gives you an idea. These are six searches that I have led. You can see, so you can see that they had applicants 18 from out of state uh, for 80 percent and then those bullet points those are the people we slay so one that they had we brought them six for Lincoln Nebraska and then you can see the place they came from uh, Littleton Colorado had a very very strong slate they had 11 in tier one and you can see the states and then they actually had 12 in tier one so then we work with the board to narrow that down to six or eight because you certainly don't want to interview 12 people you want to keep that to either six or eight individuals as well And then we have our analytics. We, we, our back office, our technology, we believe in analytics. The sports team, analytics is a big deal. And if we search, we can see who's looking at computers, and we have all that back office data. And then we have a, a timeline where this is your timeline. This is your planning meeting. We'll start backwards. When do you want to announce the superintendent to the public? We work backwards from there as far as um, what we're going to do and how we're going to do it. We put this on your website, again, that transparency. It's important that your community understand and notes, and it's really important for you as the board to get those dates in your calendar because there are a number of interviews, um, and timelines, you know, so that you're going to want to have all of that organized as you go throughout the search process. 
few testimonials that we had from some of the searches that I've led as well. And then why Midland? Why is this going to draw Canada? Canada's a great district. Um, your website's phenomenal. Uh, your test scores are great. Um, looking at, you know, the things that you have when you rank your against districts across Michigan and the nation, uh, very strong. And then just some of the things that would draw people here, uh, the location, the activities, what you have available, um, just a great place to live, Midwest values. Um, it's going to be a, it's going to be a great draw for your uh, for someone uh, to go after this job. So I'm very confident we'll get a number of applications, and we will call sitting superintendents, and we'll recruit, and we will bring you a great slate if we are selected. There's my 15 minutes. I went a little <laughs> bit over. We had some technology issues. I apologize. That's all right. Thanks, Mike. Um, I've got a couple questions for you. Uh, first of all, thank you for the presentation and, and doing your homework about Midland with all the data you just presented. Um, going back to the board portal slide, uh, I, I had a question about the transition services available. Are, is, do those come at an extra fee? Yes. If, well, yes and no. So what, what comes with the transition fee is uh, we'll, have a, we'll have a closing meeting with the new superintendent and the board. And we'll take that report I talked about. That report is going to be about 20 to 30 pages. And we will go through it page by page with your new superintendent. And if that person wants to be successful, if they follow that report based on what your community wants and the needs, they'll, they will be successful. So we go through that report with them. And then HYA will give you the dashboard for six months for free. So what the dashboard is, is it allows your new superintendent to set goals benchmarks and expectations and um, be able to follow those as they go and then they can add, customize and add anything to it as they go forward um, it's a great product that HYA has they also have board governance coaching mentoring that is all extra if you um, go for that we don't even talk about that until after the person's hired okay two more and then I'll, I will pass the uh, floor um, as far as when you're filtering your is that process um, videotaped so that the board could watch uh, some of the interviews if they so desired through the board portal? We don't video that process because we want to remove all biases from the board, okay. for one thing. But what you will see every single application as they come in, it takes, uh, we have a couple of assistants that work with us. It, it literally takes them about an hour. Once we hit an application, they get an email. They download it immediately. So as they come in, you will see the entire packet. So you won't have to wait a week or two weeks to see the applications. You know, I tell every board, usually the applications open for six weeks. That's, that's the norm. Some are four, some are eight. Six weeks, all the applications come in. The, the majority of the applications come in towards the end. Okay? They want it confidential. They don't want their current board to know. They apply at the end. Anything that will sabotage a search is if those names leak out. Um, so uh, we talk in that planning meeting, we talk about confidentiality. Um, so we have to be really careful that we don't leak those names out. Okay. Next one. Um, I know you've worked with a lot of boards in your tenure, um, some very experienced superintendent searches, uh, some not. Yep. Uh, our board, I think, uh, all of the members, except for me, uh, this is a brand new okay. process to them. Uh, so how will you interact with our board, who is experience, kind of hold, we may need some yep. hand-holding? Trust the process. We will, with, we, we will be with you every step of the way. We'll be here when you want us to be. We communicate on a daily basis. We update that portal. We put weekly updates in there. You have our cell phones. You have our emails. You can call us seven a week. Uh, we will we will respond immediately to your phone calls and to your emails. And I think the planning meeting, um, that can take anywhere from an hour to two hours. And I think once you have that, planning, you have a really good understanding of the process and how that process works. Um, but we spent a lot of time with our members who have never hired a superintendent. It, it's common. Okay. Thanks. That's yep. all I have for you. Thanks for coming in, Mike. A couple questions. Um, first, on the day in the district, obviously that yep. sounds like a really good idea. One of the questions I had was, how do you advise the board to reach out to the candidate uh, district? 
and, and your current district at yep. a certain point in the process. So typically we do the reference checks, but once you get down to finalist, it's fair game. So um, once those names become public, you can certainly call anyone you want, even people they don't list. And we do, I didn't mention it, but we do blind reference checks as well. Obviously if they list them, they get a recommendation, we know that. If you have a sitting superintendent and they don't list their board president as a reference, huge red flag to us. Mm -hmm. If you have a principal, they don't list the superintendent, huge red flag. And then so we'll dig and dig and dig and we'll call those people even if they don't list them, if they become finalists. Um, but after, after you have your finalists, if you want to reach out to any of their references or call people, um, that's, that's fair game as, as well. Great. And then uh, I really appreciate the engagement because that's extremely important. How do, how do we make sure that we have a, a broad slate for community? Input, whether it's Great staff question. or students. I know you mentioned yep. students already, but staff and, and community. Depending on the size of the district, so we work very closely for in every district, every search, very close, very closely with the administrative assistant. We work very clo closely with any PR, public relations person you might in your district. And we use social media. It's very easy to email students, staff, and parents but because you have a, a communication system. That's easy. Harder reach. It's the people who don't have students in school. And so for those people, you have to kind of target events and activities and put some stuff out on social media. Um, so we try to do that as well. Um, again, we're gonna rely on some of your office people to really help us get that word out and over communicate is, is where I'm going. Some districts put a, a, a bulk postcard to your residents just saying these are the focus groups, here's what's going on. Uh, that tends to hit them. A lot of people like getting that mail. It comes in the mail. They access it on social media. Um, so we we just, we brainstorm and we we over communicate. The six ones I listed? Yeah. Those are just six of my recent searches. Okay. There's no rhyme or reason why those are those are listed. Okay. Um, yeah, so like I said, I did an, almost 30 searches and those are those are some of the, the most recent ones. And you, you can kind of see a pattern. So I didn't pick and choose. If you look at all of our searches, you're gonna see pretty much those same numbers. I mean, maybe not in the districts that are that and say it's HYA. We have done searches with school districts under 100 kids. It was a school in Montana to over 640,000 kids. That was Los Angeles. Okay, so in between. So if we take those real small districts of four, five, six hundred students, you won't get the out-of-state applicants for those districts. But once you start hitting that five, six, seven, eight thousand that's when you tend to start getting more out-of-state applicants. And with our reach, like I said, 130 associates across not every state, but almost every state, we reach out to them. And I can see every applicant from every job HYA does. So I can go into our software system. And so if, if they slate six for a job I'm not doing, one person is gonna get that job. So now we have five other finalists from that district. And if I think it's a good match, I'm gonna reach out to that one of those five. That's kind of how we network with each other. Jen, Brad. My name is coming. Um, I wanted a little bit more historical data to your recommendations. Okay. In your 30 searches, roughly how many of those 30 searches were tier one candidates or tier two or tier three? So in every search, you're going to have a tier, tier two, tier three. Yep. So you ultimate person that was picked by all 30 of, the, of these searches in these 30 different districts, okay. were they? How many were tier one? Yep. All of them. Yeah, all of them were tier one. And we tell the board that you can move anyone you want around. Once we present those, it's called the slate. Mm -hmm. If you say this person's in tier two, 
but they should be in tier one. Their resume is great. I might say they have a great resume, but here's what we found. And okay. we share that information with you. That's why we put them in tier two. Okay. Um, and so, and then the tier threes, we're going to tell you why they're not going to be a good fit in Midland. The tier ones, you're going to have, in one search I did, we had to go tier 1A and tier 2, tier 1A and tier 1B because we had such a strong slate and we had uh, like six that were so good and then we had four or five that were just under them. So we actually helped rank them for the board. But again, you interview anyone you, we don't tell you who you're going to interview. You pick the six or eight or ten people you want to interview. We just advise you of what we found. So, um, again, you, you, this is your search. Okay. Uh, last question. We have the weeks of your whole timeline that you laid out. Yep. When is Dr. Ritchie and Dr. Shivers here personally? So we will be here um, with the price we gave you. That includes four days in the district. So we'll be here four days. However, you can contract us if you would like to. And the other thing, we've gone over a lot of those days on my searches for no extra cost because it was a neighbor, it's close to me. And like I said, Serena's here. So if she has to come for an extra time or two, she's so close, it's, it's probably not gonna matter. But if you want us here, we will be here. So typically, we are here for two full days for the focus groups. And then, um, some boards, back to your inexperience with some board members, some board members want one of us here when you do the round of six, they want us here for that because that seems to be the one that is a little bit harder to get that six down to three. And so typically we would be here for that if you would like us to and then and some actually want us here for the final interview as well. Typically we will not be here for the day in the district but we organize that and we plan that. So the day in the district, so we're, there's going to be a bunch of tours within the school. So we work with uh, a lead person from your district. Your principals will lead that tour of their building because these candidates, they're going to ask them all kinds of instructional questions about you know data, testing, um, class offerings. So the principals are the best people. And that's, when it gets down, that's, that's actually another interview as well because then you can talk to your principals and say, hey, think of these three finalists. But so, we'll, so we don't normally come for the day in the district. Okay. It's three long days, and the board, you'll have very little to do with the day in the district. That's really more about the meet and greets and about the principals leading tours, and then some type of community historian giving them a tour of the area. And a lot of times that could be a board member, a retired board member, a retired administrator, a tired st retired staff member, um, someone who really knows the area well. Okay, thank you. Yep. So obviously it's that will be working with us specifically. There's a lot of tech, a lot of other stuff going on behind the scenes. Associates, yeah. yep. is that like, like is that how you do like Great question. outsourcing or so, is it? So, okay. so I will be your two lead people, we'll be here. We also will use other associates if needed needed uh, because like I said we have we have a bunch of them so if we do need someone else to assist we'll, we will but normally our, our typical searches is done with two associates so we have a lead and then an, a, an assistant I would be the lead Serena's the assistant we work hand in hand together we split the duties evenly um, we'll be here when we need to be here and we'll do a phenomenal job for you I actually have two assistants that do all the stuff that you've seen um, and they do a lot of um, the scheduling and work and, and just getting everything super, super organized. HYA has seven uh, back office people and every church is assigned a project manager. And so that project manager is back in the home office getting the contract in order, getting ev everything, the, the, the billing, the just making sure we don't miss a piece of, of the search. And then our president um, is very involved as well. So Max is very involved. Um, and I talked to him on the way here. Um, so he's, he's hands on. Okay. Are we, any other questions? Okay. Nope. All right. right. Thank you very much. We Thank appreciate you. your time. Thank, Thank you. you.
good luck. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Next up for presentation to the board is the Michigan Association of Good evening. How are you? Good. How, How are, are you? you? Thanks for joining us. Yeah, to get a minute, get your stuff set up. It's okay. Yeah, no, uh, I think I think we're good to go. Um, so I'm Greg Shushpitowski. I'm the director of leadership development and executive ser services for the Michigan Association of School Boards. Uh, I oversee the entire team that does all of our executive ser services for the state of Michigan. We do searches in the state of Michigan than anybody. Uh, Years as director, we've done anywhere between four, uh, 19 and 21 service in the state of Michigan at a, any given year. So I'd like to go through some highlights of our proposal we've given you. Uh, I know we only have a short minute of questions you'd like to ask. We are your organization. This is the only reason we exist is to support you for good outcomes so that you can have great outcomes for kids. Uh, we provide unparalleled support We're here in Michigan. I live 26 miles away in Mount Pleasant. Search consultant access to me is no problem at all. Um, we have 28 folks on staff and we can let our full communications team, our two legal staff, and uh, in addition to the eight folks on my team, as well as our 20-ish consultants that are out in doing this work, leverage to help you with this search. Track record, we've done over 700 searches in the state of Michigan since MASB started this work. We've got a national network for promotion of your posting and for connections uh, to do of candidates. And we have really good relationships with the other associ the education associations in the state. Not only do we have a building with three other of those associations, we're also at the association conferences, talking with their members, meeting with folks, seeing who is looking for that next opportunity, who's looking to move into the superintendency, or what superintendents are looking for a new move and looking for a new opportunity. Uh, and then we emphasize a high degree of process transparency. We really do believe in this process unfolding in public. A matter of course, also in, in compliance with the Open Meetings Act and making sure that your public understands every step of the way what's going on and you everything above board throughout the whole process. Again, we, we are only here to serve boards of education. We don't try to play, we don't have a pool of candidates we're trying to place. We are not running a leadership academy where we're trying to make our numbers look great, anything like that. We only serve boards of education. Uh, we definitely wanna make sure that you find the right candidate for your posting, and we really wanna focus on getting someone who's gonna be here for the long term, which I'm sure you don't wanna be doing this every three to five years either. Uh, we have no obligation to place any candidates, and we're always mindful of doing things that are going to reflect well on the district and well on the board and, and creating an experience for the candidates that are coming to visit with you as well. So we're ever mindful of those laws that are like the OMA and making sure that public perception is always front of mind through the whole process. One of the other things that we are really proud of is the amount of stakeholder engagement we involve in the process as well, getting you as much information as you can to help inform your thinking so that when it comes time, you feel like you have all the information you need to make a great decision. So we have an online survey, which is anonymous, which can be put out to your community very quickly. Right now, we have a number of languages available, and we can add more languages, as we know, Many communities in the state of Michigan have a lot of language needs and wanting to reach as many in your community as we can, making sure that they can access that survey as well. So right now we have English, Spanish, Arabic. Uh, we do have other languages available. I think there's one that's missing off that list that I can't come up with right now. 
but we can get that translated for you into whatever you might need. Uh, we will also do face-to-face -face and virtual focus groups. They make a point of doing these at various times throughout the day to not only accommodate folks that work different shifts that can't make, you know, random business day hours or uh, and then making sure that we have virtual options as well for folks who have childcare needs or anything like that that can't attend or can only pop on a Zoom, making sure that we have different time slots for everybody to attend so everybody has an opportunity um, that wants to be engaged in the process. We'll make sure that in the room during the interviews that the folks that are attending have the opportunity to provide you written feedback um, on the candidates. Boards tend to find this very valuable as may observe something that you missed or may interpret something a little bit differently than you. Again, all helping to inform your decision thinking and involving your community in the process as well. So we'll make sure that the board gets all of those before any decisions or deliberations are done. Make sure that there are candidate open houses so that your staff and your community can come in and meet the candidates on that final interview day, shake their hand, introduce themselves, ask them a couple questions before the interviews start. And then anything they learn throughout that day could be put in those feedback forms that night at the end. We will uh, be in state and market position. Our Revelous application platform automatically posts to other states that are also using the application now. That's included, that's free of charge, that's just part of our system. So there's 13 other states that use it. Um, so as we post it live on ours, when their candidates log into their state system, they automatically will see your thing is connected to the National Affiliation of Superintendent Searchers. So all of what we do in the other state associations across the country, uh, we all meet a couple times uh, a year, and then we meet uh, once a month virtually to talk about our practice, compare notes, but we also can call each other and ask about candidates have you vigil on any of your searches? Are there any flags? What would, what would, have you seen this individual interview? What can you tell me about them? So really for me to call folks in Texas, Illinois, Oklahoma, we've got lots of references to call that don't necessarily have to be given by a candidate and we can just call and make those discrete calls and questions answered ahead of time. We'll also be having phone calls with all of your applicants, making sure that uh, we've talked to every candidate and kind of understand their story so that when you're re reviewing the resumes and applications, if you have questions, like if there's a strange transition or a gap in years or something like that, we've already talked to the candidate. We'll be able to answer that question for you so that we can move the process along and you're not wondering um, in those moments. And then of course, like I said, we have those MASB consultants that are all over the state working with boards of ed, doing superintendent searches. So if there's any reference checking, if there's any recruiting that needs to be done, I can always leverage all of those folks and the knowledge that they have about who's out there looking for a job. Uh, we'll make sure that in the interview process that we are facilitating that candidate uh, uh, selection process with you, helping you walk through that discussion as you're winnowing down the pool to decide who you'd like to interview. Again, making sure everything's compliant with OMA and everything's done in public. Um, and then you will receive all information and all the application materials from every candidate. We do not believe in hiding it. We firmly believe this is a board decision and that you will see everything that comes in and it is your choice on which candidates you'd like to move forward. So we absolutely make sure you see everything that comes in and that is completed. We'll have two rounds of interviews. Um, they'll all be in open session like we've already talked about. We will recommend, so we will form a tier based on your um, selection criteria to help you select candidates. But once we get to the interview, we will also help you determine which questions to ask. So we are very, um, of asking behavioral questions, making sure that we're asking what have you done, what would you do in a future that doesn't exist, right? Because I could be amazing when I don't have to back it up. If I could just tell you a story about something incredible that I might do in the future, right? So lots of behavioral questions is we're going to ultimately, it's your question guide. There'll be your questions, uh, but we will print you up a guide. We'll make sure it's scripted. So nobody's wondering, everybody's on the same page, 
it's a real smooth process, trying to remove any stress that that might create out of the process. Um, we've already said how the uh, audience will have a chance to provide written feedback after those interviews. And then, of course, poor district making sure all logistics are handled, candidates are, handle, are, are greeted and handled well, locations, all of that is taken care of, meetings are posted. Um, any press releases, anything like that, we'll always draft that and make sure that it's as easy as possible for the district to get that communication out. And then, of course, we are your association, so we don't go away. Um, we will always be here for ongoing support, questions. Uh, we also have a successful superintendent transition workshop that is access. Your new superintendent is on ground for about two months. Maybe that two to three month mark will come back in, do a workshop with the board and the new superintendent and make sure everybody's on the same page and off to the right, uh, good, really good start. Um, and then, of course, any calls, emails, or additional support that the board or the superintendent might need going forward, we would be happy to support you in that. Want to be available for any questions you might have about our process or the proposal? Um, sure. Uh, we're going to say something, Graham? Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, right now there are 13 other states that are using that system. Obviously, that's not the only way we'd, we would market your posting, but I'm just saying that it's just automatic. Right. When we put it in our database, that's where it goes. The National Affiliation of Superintendent Searches cover all 13 states? So we have, about, uh, we have about 35 folks that are pretty actively showing up in the group, but I think we have close to about 40 that are in – in the association. One from each state, or is that multiple people for each one from each state? I want to know how big a net that you have. Yeah, yeah. So we're probably in, I would say that we could probably cast a really good net, easily get a hold of folks in 35 states. Greg, how do you wards who are not as experienced in undergoing a superintendent search process? Sure. Um, so what I like to do is make sure that, number one, that I'm available for phone calls from any board member. I, I make sure that everybody has their questions answered ahead of time, that we can handle as much as we can ahead of time. And then when those questions come in, communicating those answers back to the whole board so everybody's on the same page. Throughout the process, I'll make sure that anything that we talk about in the room in a meeting and a training as we're getting ready for this, any workshops that we do, I will send you a recap email, like here's what we talked about, here are next steps. As we're coming into candidate selection, interviews, whatever it might be, you will always get a step-by-step mail -step from me laying out the process step by step by step by step, exactly what you can expect, right down to here's what this will sound like when I ask you a question. I'll, you know, I'll say, John, who are the six candidates you would like to invite for interview? And I mean, I will script that out in an email so you can see exactly what that language would sound like, exactly what the questions for me are going to sound like to prepare you as best as we can. Um, I've already talked about the interview guides, scripted language for the president, and going through so that there's no trying to figure out. Um, so really trying to leave no stone unturned, making sure, again, that we're available for any questions along the way. Um, but we'll have preparation workshops for you. We'll have candidate selection workshops. I'm there for every step of the way. I'll be here for the stakeholder input sessions. I'll be here for all interviews. Um, you know, anything I can do to walk side by side with you through the whole process, I'll be doing it. Thank you. Just two questions. So Greg, in your um, response, you list Jay as well. Is that a two-member team, or would, would there be others involved in addition to you? Uh, well, so Jay is the assistant director. He's, yeah. he's like my right hand. Um, so I will have access to Jay throughout your entire search. I will be your primary search consultant. Okay. You are the only search I will do. I will not be working on any other search. I won't be doing any other work. This is it. Okay. Um, so... Whether that means we're missing any other w 
searches that I could be doing, that's fine. But I will commit to you that I will not be working on any other searches than yours. Okay. And then um, I thought it was really unique to the feedback forms from the public during the interview process. Can you give us a little bit more um, maybe information on how that process works and what kind of specific feedback you're seeking from the public during that process? Yeah, so we try to keep it as op as open-ended as possible for folks that are here. Uh, we definitely, tr however, we, I don't know if you folks plan on streaming uh, and, and that sort of thing. We've done online forms as well. Um, we have that conversation, how you'd like that to work. Basically what it is is we ask, we ask folks that listen to the interview, what were the strengths that you saw in this candidate? And then what questions do you have? What do you, I wonders do you have as well? And then we leave it up to the folks in the room to write as much or as little as they would like. They have the opportunity to put their name down if they want to. They don't have to. And then we'll make copies for all of you so everybody can see every feedback form that came in. Okay. Yeah, I have a question. Yeah, John, I think you had a question. You said earlier you would be between 19 and 31 positions. Yes, sir. You're committing to only work on hours. Only, yes. Yeah. You have enough people that they're going to cover the other 18 to 30. I do. I do. Yeah, we've 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 probably got about 12 folks that work real heavy for us out in the state. Um, I've got one full-time staff, Jay Bennett, that works for me. He's he's time. The rest of the folks are retired superintendents or retired board members um, that are doing it on a contract basis. Okay. Yeah. You're, you can commit just to us. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Okay. Okay. Greg, thanks for coming. Yeah, thanks for having me. Um, how are we going to leverage technology to have all of our information in one spot? Because you're going to have a ton of resumes coming across. We have uh, this whole process is um, hundreds and hundreds of pages of documents that's going to flow. How are we all staying together? Yeah, that's, that's a great question, and you're right. It will be hundreds of pages of documentation to go through. So you will gain, once your posting closes, um, you will get access to our applicant tracking system. So you will see a bit of information that our applicants, uh, that your applicants submit. You will have your own login, and you will be able to view everything from that application to any files they've uploaded, their transcripts, reference letters, all of it will be in one place for you. So everybody will have their own individual login. Um, it's a two-step process to get that set up, and it's just based on your email that is in our system with MASB. So do they hit that the, the second they come in? <clears throat> no. So what will happen is we'll, we'll collect everything throughout the process on the closing of your thing. Uh, that will shut down. No more applications will come. I will take a look at your entire applicant pool, and then I will generate a tier for you with a master list of candidates saying, here are the folks that most closely match the criteria that you've said was important to you, and then here's a second tier. I will provide that in a cover memo for you, and you will get that along with the access to the system to see all the materials. Okay. Um, have you ever hired or recommended someone for a superintendent role that was outside the education career path? Uh, no, I have not. I have not seen that in my four years yet. Okay. Uh, um, we have not. I, I know we've had a few applicants along the way, um, but we have not seen one hired. Okay. <laughs> not one of mine. Uh, not one of mine, but but we have had, I think, two in my time that I've interviewed that have been outside of the traditional educational path. We've had a number of folks that have not been teachers in the classroom. You know, that that's pretty common that we've had folks that have kind of concentration, but have been traditional school folks from that point in their career. But a but it, say someone coming from industry or corporate or something like that, that's just it just hasn't happened. Okay. Not that it can't, 
Not that we're against it, it just hasn't. Okay. <clears throat> Greg, thank you so much for coming in tonight. We yeah, no it. problem. Thank, thank you, you so much. Nice appreciate the you. invitation. Thank you. Thank you for coming in. We're probably a little ahead of them. Why don't we just can we take a yeah? Let's take let's take take five minutes. Testing. Testing, one, two, three.
you hear me? Yes. Can you hear me? Yes. 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 Can you hear me? Yes. Thank you. When you were when you were talking at the beginning of our discussion, can you hear us? All right, next up we have Ray and Associates. Lady and gentlemen, the first year. Thank you. Awesome. Uh, Thank you. Uh, and I, David, I need to be able to share my screen if possible. You guys have to, unless you guys have a presentation. We do have a presentation. We do have a presentation. Okay. So if you want to run it from there. So if you want to run it from there. So just Sheila and David with us? That's correct. Okay. That's correct. Thanks for joining. Are you able to see us? Absolutely. Are you able to see us? You. Um, still working on that part. Work in progress. First of all, thanks for having us this evening, and uh, we'll go through some introductions in a second, but we're honored to be here tonight uh, to work with you as you embark on probably the most important task you have as a Board of Trustees, and so we're honored to be invited uh, to this evening, and hopefully we'll get the information we share with you tonight. Uh, I'll introduce you to Sheila, let her introduce herself to you. Sheila, go ahead. Thank you, David. Thank you, David, and uh, as David said, good evening, board members. It's a pleasure to be with you this evening. Um, we really appreciate the opportunity to share with you our superintendent search process. As David mentioned, I'm Sheila Alex. I live in Northville, Michigan, so I am your Michigan connection. Um, as a regional associate, I bring to the work that I do with uh, Ray and Associates 47 years of, of work in the public field of public education. Um, I spent 21 years in Plymouth Canton Community Schools. I was Michigan's curriculum coordinator and curriculum director. I then moved to Livonia Public Schools for 10 years. I was the elementary principal, director of elementary schools, director of academic services, and then chief academic officer. The last five years of my career I spent at the Michigan Department of Education. I was the chief deputy superintendent, and then I was the interim state superintendent of schools. Um, additionally, I have been an adjunct professor of literacy instruction at both the graduate and undergraduate level um, at Madonna University in Livonia. I've served on the board of directors for various national and state professional or education organizations and civic organizations, and I have been retired from public education for just over two years. So David, I'll turn it back to you. My name is David Spalter, and I am the Managing Director for Rain Associates. We've been with the firm for about three years. I also am a team member and background investigator. I, I am also a retired school superintendent. I uh, was superintendent for 18 practically 15 of those in a town of Southwest Carroll, which is very similar uh, if you're speaking demographics. I grew up here, and I kind of feel at home thinking to you guys. Um, and again, now that I've, I've been retired, I do this for the most part, and I'm also a financial advisor to a couple of dozen, dozen school districts around the state of Texas, uh, but enjoy uh, kind of pouring back in and helping you guys in, in the, the process. You know, my Michigan connections are my wife. I'll be there this weekend. Great, make her high school reunion there. And chance I get to get back to Michigan. My wife loves it and I enjoy it. So uh, again, thank you for allowing me to be the other, team members that I'll the other team members that I'll introduce to you. And we may not, uh, if you don't have the presentation up, I see there's a copy. Uh, another team member is Kathy Schoenfelder. She's a vice president for Rand Associates. She is a full-time staff member. We have three full-time staff members in Iowa. Kathy is our, our data person. 
persons to be providing you access to documents or information that you, you may need to do direct contact purchase for your existing folks and consistent with the offer. And we also have Thomas Ahart, who is a regional search associate. Uh, Thomas was recently the superintendent in Des Moines Public Schools, recently retired, he's the teacher principal there. Uh, and so we're thrilled to have him as part of the we'll, we'll talk about this in a little bit, but uh, a little more about Ray and Associates and kind of who we are. We are a national search firm. We have about, uh, about 40 regional search associates around the country, from the Midwest to the Southwest to the Northeast, who all kind of pitched in when we began a search and were just part of the lead to kind of get the word out that uh, you know, the Liberty, Liberty, Liberty and Public Schools is looking for their next leader. We have, our firm has been in the business since 1975. We've served over 1,600 students in it nationally. Uh, we're a, a woman-owned educational executive leadership search, and we do only educational leadership search searches. Some of the firms uh, you know, kind of dive into other types of uh, educational leadership programs, but we are strictly on the education side. And, uh, and we'll talk a little bit about our, about we'll talk a little bit about our, about our
to the big areas, big areas with those big areas where we're in parks, they go virtual big parks and we can work with the society, have a little alliance society. The other thing that I think we can do is really that I think is really, really, really provide a survey that provides we believe needs to be sent to all the states to all the following surveys. It's a pretty simple survey that is very high where we ask all these people what they're looking for in that next year, what type of quality they're looking for. We provide that information back we to you that as broad as we can talk about it. Board field will show you how to do it. Electric field will show you how to do it. A lot of times there's a field model. A lot of times there's a field model. So we can show you the quality. So then we take all of that. We take the work file that we developed for the full file that we can show for you. Then on the third.
Sheila, since you're based in Michigan, would you be our primary contact point? The primary contact point the primary is contact David, 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 Can you tell us a little bit about the um, wraparound services or follow-up services uh, once a candidate is selected and hired? Uh, what do you guys do next? Sure. Um, you know, we also, we have, we have several of our associates have experience, have experience, have experience in, uh, in planning or other types of things. We, we typically come back and offer 
come back um, and offer a six month check in, uh, six month check in, by way, uh, by way, showing me how it helps, how it's going, and what we need to do. I need to do myself, I need to myself to see hopefully that they can come check closer to see if it's a little bit better. Check up on that, check up on that, so we may need that there we do provide a we do provide a guarantee on you know, if something happens, some two years you have to separate, two years and you have to separate. No, 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 it's fine. You did a great job, Dean. Thank you. You did a great job, Dean. Thank you. Okay, thank you. I'll pass the microphone. So, thanks for presenting to us tonight. One question on your candidate. Um, how, how do we make sure throughout the process that we expand the search beyond your candidate pool that you have resumes for and, and broaden the reach? Yeah, that's a great, that's a great question. Our leaders who were not in our, leaders who were not in our kind of network, kind of network. Uh, and so, you know, uh, all those and social media posts that we talked about, that we talked about, 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 we talked David, how, how much do you plan to be on site um, to lead on this account? Uh, you know, if, if uh, we're selected, you know, I was going to be able to do an onboarding with you guys. Because, you guys, because because you guys as you said, it's your search. So there will be, 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 be the next time we meet, we kind of go through a list of questions. We kind of go through a list of questions. You know, here's what we did. You know, here's what we did. I would be a part of that. I would be a part of that. Jeremy Stakeholder meeting, uh, Jeremy if Stakeholder you meeting, would like us to be in you person, would like us to be in my schedule allows my ability to be there, again, I have to check that message there, again, I have to check that message there, my wife is always looking to go to this meeting, so I would be there for the stakeholder meeting, so I would be there for the stakeholder meeting, my current job allows me to be flexible with that, and then when you go through your first round of interviews, you're going to be selected, you're going to be selected, and then when you go through your first round of interviews, you're going to be selected, and then when you go through your first round of interviews, you're going to be selected, and then when you go through your first round of interviews, you're going to be selected, and then when you go through your first round of interviews, you're going to be selected, and then when you go through your first round of interviews, you're going to be selected, and then when you go through your first round of interviews, you're going to be selected, and then when you go through your first round of interviews, you're going to be selected, and then when you go through your first round of And if, 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 I, if I can 
meeting um, where the really helpful to have really helpful either to have David there, either myself David there, or if you remember, remember if you were going through our, our team, going through it might be Cassie who was there with us. There but, there's there but there's typically two of us that are two of us present that are for, present um, for many of the um, many of tasks associated with tasks the that are associated with the If not one of us, there's two of us. If not one of us, there's two of us that are present. As you can imagine, the 31 columns labeled as a spreadsheet. Do we see all of the candidates that apply for the job to the top for us? You can if you want to. And you can. I think we have you guys all are now. You have all of our now. You have all of our now. System we provide a password. We really can look at those. We're going to filter. We're going to filter and make sure that our business is the best. You may be doing the same. Oh, 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 you may be
Yes. And how long until we get um, complete consensus building matrix? Two. Complete consensus building matrix. Building matrix. It'll, it'll, it'll take us uh, it'll, it'll a couple uh, of weeks. As we select you, will you be handling any other searches at the same time? Or just focusing on uh, ours? Uh, generally speaking, I'll generally be the lead resource, 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 resource
can't cast as wide a net as we have firms that, that we do a search nationwide. Um, so uh, of the of the three, those would be my, my top two choices. I lean towards uh, HYA. I think they've got uh, more nationwide Herb Jordan and Associates. Mm -hmm. um, Dr. Shivers and all other things being equal, I think that's Nine search, if I've gotten a year straight, was the transition from Art Brock to Gary Hughes, mm -hmm. um, and that was a that was a shift, uh, and that was a big search process. And, and, and so I think they, uh, granted, it's a long time ago, but I, I think that that matters. For some, uh, so I would lean to HYA. In addition to all the ones we've already mentioned, I was um, I was really impressed with the thought that went into HYA's um, response to our RFP as well as their presentation and the personalization. Um, I also thought that they made a really good case on how they gather candidates. MASB, I just, I wasn't sure that we were going to see anybody from outside of maybe the mid And Ray and Associates, put my finger on it, but I did diverse pool and have a, a great group of candidates to pick from. And I can't exactly tell you why, um, but that was kind of my impression. Uh, I think we'd be remiss if we didn't talk about some of the prices. Um, mm -hmm. well, but Ray and Associates, at least based on my read through, was uh, significantly higher than, well, significantly higher certainly than MASB and a little bit higher than HYA. So something certainly to consider as we're addressing all these. So HY is a um, middle, kind of middle of the road mm -hmm. price point, uh, but I think we get uh, more luck than we would with um, MASB. Uh, Ray, I, I like them. Um, I, I, I felt like they were too arm's length, right? Like they were always, they weren't like they weren't gonna be here. Um, maybe what we needed them because, uh, you know, let's face it, we're very new to this. Um, I haven't done this in 10 years, and none of you have gone through this process. So and you gave him an opportunity to say, well, she lives in Northville. You know, it, if you want her to take the lead. Right, and, and, and he didn't. didn't um, so I was, I was a little bit about And it seemed like they just always circled back to this matrix. You know, there, there was no real other options there. This is going to fix it. Um, you know, he, I think it was, that was the answer to your question, Brad. How we piled it together for us, and well, we'll look at the matrix. So I didn't really like that. Um, I, I was equally impressed, and I agree with with all the comments about HYA, uh, and and your comments about um, MASB. So uh, it, it, my I guess initial choice would be to, to go with HYA as well. The other um, plus or noticeable thing um, was with HYA. Those app the applications, we see them as they come in. Mm -hmm. um, they didn't say there was like a closing date and then we look at them and then you see them. Part of the technology piece was it comes in and you see it. Um, and I think that there's a lot of knowing who's applying and when um, in addition to um, the tiered system of, of all of the conversations that they will have with people and then yeah. Yeah. Um, rank them for us. I think and, and, and there's more I think than than just you know the, the paper that we have in front of us. I really had a good feeling about Mike. You know, he was a very personable guy. He's he, um, what he was talking about. He's got a wealth of experience, and he I thought he had a great answer how he would deal with a board, kind of like our makeup. Um, and I think that's that was a really good thing. Uh, Phil, do you have anything? Yeah, the only. I think the thing that tipped me with over the age, one, the personalization, but more importantly, the community involvement process. I think mm -hmm. Midland is a really unique community in that we have people that are extremely engaged in our schools, and we're extremely blessed to have a community so involved, so we owe it to our community. 
it's not just us as representatives of the community, but the community has direct input um, throughout that process. Um, and, it, you know, being conservative, I keep looking at the price tag, um, and it is a difference, obviously, with MASB being probably seven to $10,000 lower cost, but I think when you're looking at hopefully finding somebody with you know, seven to 10 years runway, I think it's a very reasonable and prudent um, investment for us to make as a district to make sure that we get the right candidate. Hence why we also scored in our country first looking at the candidate uh, price as 20% and years as 40 and 40% for the scoring, the weighting of the scores. So. To, to follow up on your uh, point, uh, when you mentioned a tipping point for you, uh, coming into this, I was leaning toward MASB. I really um, liked the Michigan connection. I liked uh, the access that they provide to us, that they would be here every, every step of the way, 26 miles away. Um, but he really, they didn't do a good job flushing out how they would engage the community um, and didn't elaborate on how we're going to draw candidates from, you know, the, the vastness that we're looking for. Uh, so, uh, for all of those reasons, my my choice now is is HYA. And I, uh, go ahead, Jeff. I, I haven't heard comments of all the board members. I move that we enter with Hazard Young, Atea, and Associates in the form that was in their the form of the letter agreement that is in their. Um, uh, proposal, I would recommend that we have this reviewed by our outside counsel mm -hmm. before we enter into the agreement, but I have no reason to think it's not a <coughs> perfectly appropriate retainer agreement. Support? Okay, so I have a motion by Mr. Lauterbach, support by Mr. Rausch. Any additional discussion? I think we can probably maybe negotiate some of that pricing with them as well and see how much room there is to, to wiggle there uh, without sacrificing service. Okay. Mm -hmm. Any other comments? All in favor? I'm oh, sorry. Sorry. On the, the expenses, as somebody that travels quite often, there's probably not enough travel expense for today, so we may want to see if we can lean on the Mich Michigan connection more so we can reduce travel. But totally agree. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, motion carries. We will uh, move forward. And with that, um, I will accept a motion for adjournment. Make a motion to adjourn. Second. Motion by Phil, supported by Jen. All in favor? One thing before we adjourn. Yes, and I think we should give a shout out to Al High Tennis Team for the state championship. Congratulations. <laughs> All in favor say aye. 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 We stand adjourned. Thank you. Nick, check your